Hello ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned into the Controversy 7 here on YouTube, so I would like to say thank you for tuning in and for joining me once again. For those of you that are new to this channel, hopefully you can get something interesting out of this. I don't know, I'm not going to force you to subscribe, but subscribe to the Controversy 7. Anyways. Uh, this is a different video for you here. This is something that has just recently happened. Um, I received a phone call. Now, for those of you who know me, I have opened up a YouTube phone line so that most of you can be able to easily get access to me. You can call me um, if you want to speak with me personally. Um, but that time is coming. I, I'm leaning more now towards getting to a point where I'm going to have to make a decision whether I want to keep this phone line, phone, phone line going or whether I should change that line overall because it is getting expensive for me to keep that phone running on YouTube there. So um, that's something there that I am possibly going to be making a decision in the next month or so, whether I should keep this phone running or whether I should change it overall. And only a select few people will be able to have my line or those who uh, who do need who who urgently do need to speak with me i can be able to then contact them um that's pretty much what i'm leaning towards now because it is getting expensive so and uh yeah i do i need that's something that i thought i'd say there apart from this uh i have received many phone calls over the years um that i've been on youtube i have received many phone calls from people all over the world, um, whether that be from Australia, from Europe, Africa, uh, North America wide. Um, I've had people who contacted me from the, like many people contacted me. There's uh, even engineers, people who are even uh, doctors have called me and gave me a lot of insight on some things and have emailed me and I've exchanged words and all those kinds of things. Um, so, that's something that I can say I'm definitely proud and happy that uh, I was able to experience that. Um, but anyways, I'll see how it goes because this phone is costing me roughly about $300 and it's or, maybe, or even close to $400 now, which is getting ridiculous. Um, so that's something that is there. Um, I have received phone calls from people who are within the LGBT movement. Um, some have called me left me some extremely hateful messages and threats and stuff like that. And there are those who have contacted me um, saying that they came across my content and when, they, when, when they, they, they were moved, compelled to call me because they felt that they were truly living the wrong lifestyle and they needed to change. Um, and, I, and I've been keeping in contact with those people um, and uh, some of them ended up... Uh, I don't. I honestly, and I and I can't speak as far as whether they, what whether they have progressed. I know they have progressed, but I don't know by how much because I am not there personally, so or in person. Now, um, I believe that would be. I don't even have the date on me. I believe that would be on the seventeenth or yeah, seventeenth of August. Um, and so, I received a phone call just before I. It was it was close to getting close to midnight on uh, on my time zone and this phone call was from someone who i guess he was a viewer and he said that uh he was watch he's been watching my my content for quite some time and uh he felt compelled to just call me and just to say thank you um for the videos that i've that i've been posting out there and uh pretty much I've impacted his life in a, in a major way. And that's something I'm, I'm very grateful for. And you know what? Thank you um, for, I'm, I'm really glad that I, I'm, at least I'm able to reach people out there because I never know who I'm reaching. You never know who you are reaching anytime you share any type of content. When I upload a video, I don't know. I never know who I'm going to reach. I just upload a video and I just say, Lord, it's no longer in my hands. I've done my part. Um, the rest is, is, is in your hands. Um, whether it falls upon deaf ears or whether it falls upon people who actually um, long to hear some truth and they're looking for like the right path, um, that's then you know I'm 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 grateful that I was able to do that. Apart from that, he called me also to let me know that 
his brother was uh, struggling with homosexuality. I'm going to cut the, no the story a bit short and get to the point where he said, I need to speak to his brother personally, directly. And so um, he handed over the phone to his brother. His brother was just in tears. The guy is crying and crying and crying. And that's when I realized, because the thing is, I was speaking to him and his brother told me he was like, the, the, the guy told me that he was struggling with homosexuality and to make things worse, what got me was when he told me that he, he has a master because he kept on telling me on the phone, I would speak to him and he would say, my master, da, 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 da. but my master, da, 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 da. My, my master. Da, 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 da. Then I got to the point where I said, hold on, who is this person who you are referring to as your master? Is this man like, what exactly makes him your master? And then he began to say, well, this man, he calls him his master because he is pretty much his pimp. And not that alone, but this man is also the one that hooks him up with the drugs which he takes. I then asked him what kind of drugs exactly he is involving himself in or what he takes and he says he takes crystal meth and then the other thing to make things worse and I and I and before I go further I said I said to him I, I said whoever told you pretty much like why would you call someone a master you have you only have one master and that is your God you have one father that is your God you don't have, if you call any other, if you call a fellow human being your master, you are essentially a slave to that fellow human being. It is in a way worshipping another human being. Not just that alone, but if you are, if you bow down to a, to a fellow human being or you call that person your, 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 your master and you do whatsoever they tell you to do, and you lower yourself down to the ground for them, it is no different than you ultimately bowing down to Satan himself. If you worship anything other than God, you are worshiping the devil. Once again, I'm going to say this so all of you can hear this. If you worship anything and anyone other than the living God, you are worshipping Satan. And when I said that, he told me something else. He was crying even more. He, was in he, was, he sounded like he was in fear. And he told me that what his master did to him, also, I, I don't remember if it was the same day, but his master branded, branded upon him a serpent. He basically took, uh, I believe it was like, uh, he said that he pretty much took, um, I don't remember, I don't even know, I don't remember word for word what he was, what his, his statement was exactly, but he said that, I believe it was, um, it was like his master took, um, whether it was iron or whatever that has, that was formed in the shape of a snake, and he, he, he basically heated it up and then he pretty much um, branded it on his on his body but not just anywhere but on his, where on on right on his uh, on his private part so now for the rest of his life he's pretty much going to walk around with the with a, with a, with the image of a serpent wherever he goes hold that thought i asked him how did he end up even in that life, lifestyle? How, how did he enter or be, get into homosexuality? And that's when he told me that the way it happened, even it, 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 the way it all happened was he was pretty much seduced. He was, he was tricked into doing crystal meth. And when he took that drug, he began to then have dreams and he began to have feelings homosexual feelings 
that began to then entice him and began to then uh, pretty much mess around with his head. And then he began to think more about sleeping with men and doing odd jobs to men and all those different things. And that's what got him into that lifestyle. And the thing is, before he even went into the whole crystal meth thing, he was doing a lot of weed. So he was doing that drug, which was pretty much like, uh, and you know what? It's, it's more of like when you, when, you start, when you start using drugs, it doesn't matter how innocent you may think that drug is. It always begins with that drug which you think is innocent. And it ultimately becomes a gateway into more heavier things. Those who do, uh, those who do, um, who do, let's say, mush, or, or those who do weed, they'll say, oh, well, it's better than, it's not as bad as doing mushrooms. And those who do mushrooms will say, oh, well, it's, not, it's, it's better than, 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 than sniffing cocaine. And those who are doing cocaine, they'll say, oh, well, it's not as bad as, as, uh, as, as, as those who are, who are doing heroin. And, and, and those who do heroin will say, well, hey, at least it's not like bath salt. At least it's not like flaca. So there will always be an excuse to justify whichever drug that, we, that, that most people are taking. Whoever is on drugs is always going to find an, an excuse to justify why the drug which he or she is taking is not as bad or severe as the one that other people are taking. There will always be an excuse to justify which drugs are supposedly not as dangerous. But at the end of the day, a drug is a drug. Just like there is no such thing as good sin and bad sin. Because sin is sin at the end of the day. You can't say that there are good lies and bad lies because th that term white lies. It is simply to cover up the word lies. Because a lie is a lie at the end of the day. Going back to this story, things began, began, began to, to kind of heat up and I began to realize, I began to understand, you know, most of these people, it almost was like an eye opener because of the, the questions that the guy was asking me over the phone. How do I get to Jesus? How do I speak to him? He asked me the question, is, can I call him? Do I phone him? But like, what's his phone number? Do I, how do I get in touch with him? That's when I realized many people don't even know about Jesus Christ. Society has played the game of pretty much destroying Jesus from everybody. This young generation growing up is in deep doo-doo. This generation that is growing up is in deep trouble. And that's something that when I think about right now, it is quite scary. It makes sense that we are living in the last generation. We are the last generation. You and me, those who are roughly my age, those young teenagers, the youth, the young adults, there's a good chance you're not even going to get old. We are not going to get old. We're not going to see our old age because the trumpets are going to sound. I realized that, you know what, honestly, I didn't even, when I thought about it, I, do, I did not even know how to go about even speaking about this. Because, the, the, because, because this young man was in tears and he's just constantly crying, crying, and he, he wants to change. He even told me that he can't even poop properly. He cannot even poop properly. His body has been damaged. Men out there, for those who are thinking about getting themselves into the homosexual lifestyle, you need to be very cautious and think twice before you even attempt to go into this thing and begin to experiment more of what you have been thinking in your head before you go and practice that which you have been practicing in your head. Think 
about what you're getting yourself into. Because you are going to damage your own body. You are damaging yourself. And those people who are in the homosexual lifestyle, all they think about from morning is pleasure. Eat, sleep. Again, when, when they're awake, they think a lot about pleasure. When they're sleeping, they think about pleasure. Most people, when they go to sleep, they have no idea that they're actually having sex with demons. That is a whole different thing all by itself. A whole different subject by itself. In fact, I'm actually publishing, I'm writing a book on that. I'm, writing, so I'm, 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 I'm actually in the process of writing all of these things and documenting it down and making it available for all of you. People are actually having sex with demon spirits and they have no idea that they have been having sex with, le with legions of demons in their sleep. That is something that's going to be an eye-opener for many of you. And I hope that it becomes an eye-opener because this is something that is leading a majority of people as a storm of a wave. And many people are buying into this lifestyle without knowing that they have actually been practicing having sex with demons before these things began to manifest outwardly, which led them to go and practice what they are practicing now. And to make things worse, your government which have been hijacked by demons, behind the scenes, your governments have said, hey, let's pass a law or let's make a national holiday. Let's make a day where we can be able to make, we can, let's call it a pride day. Let's make that day a day where people who are homosexuals can be able to be proud of who they are. Let them be prideful and say, nothing is wrong with me. I am perfect. I am not living in sin. What I am doing is perfectly normal, and even God thinks it's, a, it's, it's, it's even special because He gave it to me. So, your leaders will tell you that. What you fail to see is that what you are actually entertaining during the Pride Festivals is you are actually welcoming in the demon or spirit of pride. The spirit of pride once welcomed into an individual's life, that spirit of pride blocks the doorway to the Holy Spirit of God. God does not force Himself into your life. God does not force His Holy Spirit upon anyone. If the devil can come up with an intelligent way to be able to get you yourself to block the Spirit of God away from, from coming to your life, he has already won the battle. And that's what the devil is doing right now. As the conversations went on with this, with this young man on the phone, I began to ask him whether he has a Bible on, on, on him. I wanted to pray with him on the, over the phone. I wanted to speak to him some more. And guess what began to happen? His master began to call him. And that's when I began to realize, I, I began to realize something demonic was taking place. I was observing it. His master kept on calling. And he told me, he's like, controversy. My master is calling me right now. Oh my, he's, oh, my, oh my gosh, he's calling me right now. Should I answer? And I said, no. Do not answer that phone. Talk to me on the phone right now. Keep talking to me on the phone. I'm talking to him. Controversy. He's calling me again. He's, he's bombarding my phone right now. He's calling me. Should I answer it? I said, no. Do not answer it. And, and as I keep talking to him, it got to the point where it was like the disturbance within the phone wasn't enough. Right in the background, as I'm talking to him, I began to then hear conflicts and yelling. Someone be, it, it was as though someone stormed into the house, yelling at him, hang up the effing phone, hang up the effing phone, hang up the effing phone. Just like that. It is as though something triggered whoever or the master, something triggered him to call to call, to call the phone and try and tell him not to speak to me or to persuade him to not, like, to basically avoid speaking to me on the phone because he knew it was like there was a threat to them. It was as though the spirit that was with them was provoked by the conversation that we were having over the phone. And then as, it was, and the guy was crying on the phone 
And he's, honestly, I, 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 I'm, so, I'm so disturbed by this. He's crying on the phone and all of a sudden I begin to hear, hang up the effing phone now, hang up the effing phone. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh my, he's trying to talk to me and, and then the phone just went off. They closed the line. Just imagining what kind of lifestyle that the guy is living, he is in. He is involved in something that is far more sinister. You know? Hold that thought. Months ago, I had received a phone call from a man who was in Nigeria. This man also, he called me. He was struggling with homosexuality. He did not go to the point of practicing it, but it, was, it is something that was, he's wrestling with. And he told me that this thing began with his father, and then his brother also got affected by it because his brother is also entertaining it. And this thing also then moved on to him. We began to speak on the phone and he asked me if that was, if, if, like, if, the, if, that, if that was the, a sign of a, of a generational curse or if there was something that is much more, if there was something demonic behind be, uh, that, was, that was holding onto their family and not let go, letting go. And so we spoke with him and I, and we began, I began to analyze certain, so from some scriptures from the Bible and we began to speak about, about this thing and I pretty much told him at the end that what he is involved in, what they have in their family is a generational curse. It's a generational curse that began that his, when his father opened the door because they did not put Jesus Christ first primarily in their home. It then was easier for the spirit to move to his, to, towards his brother and also migrate onto him. As we were talking on the phone, I began to illustrate to him the example. I said, you know what? We were born under the first sin. We, were, we are all born sinners because every single descendant of Adam and Eve are sinners. And because we are sinners, our nature, we are by nature, our nature is sin. And this is the reason why, and I explained to him, I said, this is the reason why God had to send Jesus Christ to come here on this earth, clothe himself with the nature of mankind, take on the mortal flesh, take on the complete nature of humanity, and defeat that nature at his death. His whole entire life, he lived a perfect life. He was sinless. This is the reason why we cannot be able to overcome our nature by our own strength. Because we, at the end of the day, are sinners. And last time I checked from what you just heard right now, by, 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 by law, or by, by nature, we are sinners. So, having that logic there, our own strength will not be enough to overcome our own weaknesses and sins. That's why we need to put on the nature of Christ to be able to overcome and to trample over the scorpions and serpents and demons and legions of this world. Satan is defeated. Satan is a loser. He has lost the fight. He did not lose the fight to us. No. He lost the fight to our master. He lost the fight to our savior. He lost the fight to the king of kings and lord of lords. You no longer have to be a slave to the master of this world. You no longer have to be a slave to your own nature. You no longer have to be a slave to sin. Because Jesus Christ has overcame the sin of this world. This is why you can't do this alone. So if you think that all the power is in your mind and you can overcome it by your own strength, think again. You can try, but guess what? It's always going to be hard for you to overcome it. But when you give all of your burdens to Jesus Christ, and you pray and fast and meditate upon the word of God. 
there's a there, it's not going to happen like fast just like that in one night but now what you're doing when you meditate upon scripture and you pray to your father in heaven and you you and you and you and you practice fasting what you are doing is you are it's like you are building a whole new character when you do that by meditating upon the word of god the word of god is the mind of god that you're seeing for yourself so what you are see what you are doing when you meditate upon scripture you are meditating upon the character of christ and when you pray and fast more what's going to happen is the things which you once used to listen to the music that you once used to, used to listen to you begin to develop hatred towards them because now it's like your nature is now more leaning towards a character of righteousness and you are longing for Jesus Christ your savior and here's the thing when you come to the presence of God you are exposed for what you are when you come before the throne of God your father you are going to feel guilty when you do feel guilty do not give up that is not when you give up when you feel guilty when you come before the throne of God and you feel unworthy of his presence it's because it is the Holy Spirit that is letting you know that you need to pray and you need to ask for forgiveness and you need to repent and turn to him fully surrender yourself fully to God you can either allow you can you can you can either look at that and say I am unworthy therefore I'm going to turn around and walk com the complete opposite di direction and not turn back to my Lord but the minute you do that the devil has already won the victory and he is going to laugh and say oh how the mighty are fallen that is how the devil laughs when children of God who were once strong and faithful when they fall because of discouragements or when they fall because of any type of temptation the devil laughs and he says how the mighty are fallen and he sits on his throne of darkness laughing but what the devil needs to, to be reminded of is he has lost the fight now here's the thing the devil loves to trick people into 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 always remembering their, their past all you need to do is remind him of his future and he will flee away from you as i go back to this other story as i was speaking with this man from night from nigeria he agreed to all of those things as, as we were speaking he said yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir i accept it i believe it i believe yes jesus christ is my lord and my king and i and i believe and i accept him he was and and it's like every it's like when when i was speaking to him on the phone it was as though there was an atmosphere of confession it was as though, as though every time i was speaking to him not a single i didn't even i wasn't i didn't even hear him even argue against against what i was telling him he just kept on agreeing he said yes i i believe it i believe it and then and then and then he and then he asked me if i can pray for him or if we can pray over the phone and i agreed i said yes let's do that and then but before i before i prayed i asked him a series of questions and i and i told him before we pray i need you to to now stand as as we are speaking on the phone it is no longer me and you now because now the distance though he is in Africa and I am in North America I said now as we are about to enter into this season of prayer that distance is no longer relevant we are now literally close face to face through the power of the Holy Spirit of God and I said as we begin to pray you need to agree to to what I'm what I'm about to ask you do you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life do you do you do you accept that you are a sinner and that the only way to be able to overcome this is through Christ Jesus do you do you believe that Jesus Jesus death on the cross of Calvary was for your for your sake and that through him only you can be redeemed I asked him a series of questions and he said yes I believe I believe amen so we get we began to pray here's where things get interesting as we began to pray with him on the phone he was he was at first he was saying amen 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 as i kept on praying then here's what happened i began to say let the power of the holy ghost rest upon him and touch him from his, from 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 the from his head all the way down to his feet 
and let the fire of the Holy Ghost bruise and, de and, and, and cast away any type of demonic stronghold that, were, that, that, that are with him at that hour. And when he, before he was saying, Amen, Amen, and just right away when I said that, and, I, and, then, and, then I, and then I said, let the blood of Jesus now fall upon him, something began to happen on the other side of, or the other line of the phone. He began to now make strange sounds, which sounded so demonic, I can't even explain. He began to almost make like a sound that was almost like a rattling type of a sound. I can't even describe how what the sounds, how it was even sounding over the phone. All I can tell you it is, is it was pure demonic. And as we and 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 the interesting thing is, the minute those sounds and voices began to come from him, I felt something very strange. For the first time in my life, I, I felt something I've never experienced before. It was like at that instant, there was a presence of blazing it's like uh, i experienced boldness like i've never experienced before it was like a wave basically came from from above and and basically struck me down like just like that and my entire body i began to feel like i was my, my heart began to race my heart began to increase my 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 my, my heart rate was like <laughs> it was like racing but it wasn't it wasn't a feeling of fear. It was a feeling of, it was almost like there was fire around me. And, and, and it was like that fire also, I can feel it inside my heart. And it was like my, and, and I knew right away what I was up against. And I can tell you all with confidence at that hour when I was on the phone praying with this man, I felt as though I was literally surrounded by thousands and thousands and thousands of angels of God that I could not see with the naked eye. And as I kept on praying on the phone, my words became soft, yet it was on point, and it was able to it was effective because the man was rattling back and forth. And there was there were some voices that wanted to come out from him and wanted to speak to me. And then I and it was like my conscience said, do not speak with that with those voices, do not entertain conversation with them. Call the man. So I called, I called the man's name. I called him and he, he did not say anything. He, he, he became quiet. And then I called in his name again and he, never, and he didn't respond. So my conscience said, the next time you call his name, call on his name and, 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 and demand that he speaks to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So I said that. I called, on his, I called his name. I said, brother, in the name of Jesus Christ, speak to me. And then he said, huh? And then I said, can you hear me? And he said, yes. And I said, are you aware of what just happened right now? And he said, no, what are you talking about? And I said, you were just making some bizarre sounds and noises for when, as I was praying with you. Did you hear that? Did you, were you aware? And he, did, he, and he said he was unaware. That was when I realized it was like the, the knowledge came to me that when people enter into a state of possession, they normally don't know what's going on because they enter into a state of tranquility because that's what happened to the man it was like it was as though he began to fall asleep while i was praying with him on the phone and while he entered into that state of tranquility the spirits then were able to come through and begin to they demanded it was as though they were demanding that i stop the prayer because they were being bruised by the prayer by every single word this is what happened months ago. Then I began to realize truly that there is a demonic movement behind homosexuality. And I'm not saying this to scare any of you. But I'm telling you this so that you, are, you can be, be, be aware and be cautious before you get yourself into that lifestyle. Know that this is something that is pure satanic. It is something that is definitely there not for your best interest. You might think that, oh, it feels good. Sure, you. I, if, if you think it feels good or you like it, don't think that that is the, that is the, the right way of, 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 of pleasure. Because you're damaging yourself. Now, I'm going to be speaking more about these things 
because I realize many people are truly struggling with these things. So I'm going to be, I'll be speaking more about these things and breaking them down. And honestly, I don't even know if I will be allowed to publish these things on YouTube because I have spoken about homosexuality before and YouTube deleted those videos down. They took some of the content down. Um, so it's something that I almost, I don't even know if it, if I'll even be able, if I'll successfully be able to even upload the, the, these kind of contents. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be publishing books on these. I'm going to be pu publishing um, a lot more on these kinds of these kinds of things because, and especially the one that many people are sleeping and having sex with spirits, but they don't know this. It might sound strange to you, and it might sound like a conspiracy theory to you, but until then. You can call it what it is right now, but I highly recommend just wait until I put out the content. Many people don't know um, even Jesus Christ. They never heard of about Jesus Christ. It's just sad. It's just really tough. Like I honestly don't even know. I feel I really feel bad um, for for those for those people. I really do. I I I'm kind of speechless right now. I don't even know what to even say. I'm just thinking about the whole lifestyle right now, the situation of what that young man is going through and many others who are going through this kind of a lifestyle. And what he told me, he, there's a lot of things which are, he told me in detail before the line got off, uh, got cut off. And even I spoke with that other brother from Nigeria and many other things uh, happened. I, 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 I cannot go into the details of that right now. But, you know, many people need prayers. Do not just go up to people and say, you're going to hell because you know, hey, because you're, you're a sinner. Well, if, if that person that you're pointing your finger to is a sinner, then what makes you? You're not a sinner? The truth is we're all sinners. But the question is, are you the sinner who is slain by the blood of the lamb? Or are you the sinner who is saved by the blood of the lamb? That will be for you to finish. Though that will be your own story to conclude. You are the author of your own life. How your life story ends will be based upon your own decisions and based upon your own lifestyle. This is a pretty long video, but hey, I'm not going to hold you off anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Controversy 7. Thank you for tuning in and for joining me. Until next time, you take care of yourselves. Stay tuned. I'm going to be back on YouTube again. I'm going to be more consistent, more videos coming up. Um, so yeah, keep on the lookout for that. Other than that, you take care of yourselves and be safe and I'll see you next time.